Welcome back to Brews and Business. And, uh, today's episode is going to be a lot of fun. And before we get started, I want to let you guys know about the Brews and Business. Gregrin Coffee Roasters, uh, the official coffee roaster of the podcast. Right now we have Costa Rica, the lactic anaerobic fermentation semi wash process. It's going to taste like cherry cola and hibiscus. Being light in the coffee tastes just that good. So you can find out how to buy it, where to buy it. You can go to gregorincoffee.com or you can go to uh, brewsandbiz.com and uh, get yours there too. And we got some cool new merch, uh, including the water bottles, little camelback water bottles. Yeah, those are, uh, Sophia, it's make sure quality. I take that to work every day now. She'll leave that's dad's yeah. water bottle, so now I take that, that water bottle. The daddy, day. you got to stay hydrated. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's pretty cool. That's cool, yeah. And, the, and then I, I need to order us some hoodies and stuff too and try those out. So that'd I, be fun. I want to put in a little something there that we, we don't, say very often but if anybody listening here wants to become a guest on our website at the very bottom there there's a become a guest link and i believe up in the top left there's also mm -hmm. uh, a link but you guys can go on there fill it out and then basically Braden gets all the awesome information we can reach out with you guys and get some scheduling and as tim knows you might be able to get squeezed in but you're probably gonna get squeezed scheduled out a few months uh but yeah if you guys want to become a guest come on and fill out the application you want to introduce our guest yeah so uh this is tim owner of classic cuts men's grooming uh Oh. Tim's been Tim's been my my. Is he judging my haircut for, right now? Absolutely. Probably, absolutely. But you know, I know a guy. That's a good thing about you know what they say: getting older is all about knowing a guy. Yeah, I know a guy. So don't worry, we can fix that. You got a guy? Well, I got a guy. It's not supercuts either. He's all right. Way better than supercuts. Do you cut hair? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, anyways, pretty good. Back back, back to it. this no, is Tim. Sorry, just he's been, and I don't know, he's been my best friend for many 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 years, uh, and he just recently started his entrepreneurship journey, uh, and. Uh, Man, we've been trying to get him. I've been trying to get him on the podcast for a while now, but as we all know, life gets busy. We get busy. They do them on Fridays. Well, okay. Fridays are your busiest day. Okay, <laughs> I get it. He's a barber. You know, it is what it is. But nonetheless, here we are now. And uh, yeah, so we're here to learn a little bit about Tim. I haven't. I'd like to learn about Tim. Yeah. Yeah. So Tim, tell us, about, <laughs> tell us about yourself. Tell us about Tim. I'd like to learn about Tim too. <laughs> uh all right, so so I actually, I individual, I tell you, I do want to ha I do want to ask you one question. I think I've asked you this before. Actually, I'm I'm fairly confident I've asked you this before. Uh, you mentioned uh, about the earlier that you kind of have some podcasts going and so on and so forth. Um, what made you want to take this leap into entrepreneurship, and how do you think it's affected your life since then? You know, a year later, because before uh, you were kind of sort of managing a company, but not the owner. And then you kind of did the whole thing yourself. So how does that, how has that really changed your life perspective? Well, not much. Okay. Uh, realistically, I was, I, I do the same thing I did before. Right. You know, it's, it's not like it's a drastic difference. It's just more controlling, more open. I change, I make my own hours, you know, I'm more of a, uh, it's, it's different because I don't have people under. Right. You're a solopreneur is what we call them. So I do the same thing I did. Oh, wanna be, wantapreneur? No. Solopreneur. Solopreneur. Yeah. yeah. I like wantapreneur too. But but you are doing it on your own now. It, it is a entrepreneur. It's it's a little different um, versus having control over people. You know, I, everything I do now, uh, including the scheduling, the payments, everything is the same thing I did before. Like I made it easy on myself. I made it easy on all my clients. I was like, when I transition, the easiest thing I can do is don't change it. You know, don't change too much of what I do. The vibes are a little different, but as far as business goes, it's it's relatively the same. Yeah, you know, maybe the the vibes, like I said, are different, and then. The way I approach it's a little differently, but luckily I worked under a great leader, you know, right. I, I can, I can honestly say that. So it, it helped me to be able to just know what to do and when to do, you know? And so I've took a lot into that and then I just kind of made it my own. Cool. I just, you know, I asked that question just cause like I said, we, I've seen that transition and I remember when you were, you're basically held, it, it, we, we've talked, right. We've talked just right before the podcast, but you're held to basically running a company and now you are able to have a little bit more control and you don't have to have that stress of the other people, you know, uh, underneath you. Do you have plans on eventually growing to that point again? Or you're like, nah, I'll probably just stick it here. And you know, the place I work at now has amazing owner yeah. and, and, and beforehand I was like, I'm going to be here a year, maybe to go create my own open space and do everything myself. But being in this kind of setting, being by myself and, and seeing the way that they run things makes me really appreciate that a little bit more. I mean, I just show up and I work, you know, and it's, I run my own business, but I don't have any kind of, right. You don't have the headaches of running your own business. It, exactly. Which is very generous. So to answer your question. Yeah. So How does that work? I'm in a suite. So the suite is probably block off where the wall halfway here. And then that would be my room. 
Mm-hmm. So they have 32 of them in the building. Act. Mm-hmm. So everyone runs their own business inside the suite. So they just rent the suite, you know, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, however yeah. they do it. Yeah. And then they run their business out of it, which is, it's very generous. So mm-hmm. for your question, yeah, I do. But I think now that I've seen a different way of doing it, I really like the suite idea. So for me, I'd like to open like nine, 10 of them, you know, and just rent out eight of them, nine of them, however, have myself and one of them, obviously. Because then you you get to run, you still have the money overhead coming in. But I don't have to control everybody. Like, I don't have to put my name in somebody else's business. You know? More like an agency then. Yeah, essentially. So, like, when you run a barbershop, if you have nine, ten people in there, even if you only have three people, your name is, they're attached to your name. All of them. Everybody that works there is attached to your name. One mistake by them. So, for instance, I'm going to use myself. If I work. But they're there, contracted too, right? Or the employees. They're employees. Oh, okay. Now, some are not. Some It depends on the shop. So there's multiple different ways you can do that. You can do booth rent, which is obviously that's a little different. That's mm-hmm. where you just pay the rent. And then there's employees where you get a full W-2. So me, I was on like a commission base beforehand. So I made a certain commission off every haircut I did. And I got a W-2 at the end of the end of the year. You know, I got a paycheck every Friday. So that concept was nice for me because initially you don't make near as much money on commission base, but your taxes are easier they have to pay for all the equipment, you know. So there's there's generally when you do the commission base, they bring in the clients for you. So because th- you're working under their name, not your name. So now I, I obviously work under my name in a different building. So they don't do anything with me. You know, the building doesn't. They just I just say, hey, I'm located inside Salons by JC Suite 21. So I, I like that concept. So for me, I'd like to do that concept somewhere else because, example, if I where I was at beforehand. If I mess up, no one says, Tim messed up. They say the company that I mm-hmm. worked for messed up, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So if I have four people under me, one of them messes up really bad, you know? They don't say that person messed up. It's it's my name that's attached yeah. to the business. Yeah. Yeah. Messed up. Now, how, I know depending on the person, this can go different ways, but how bad can you really mess a haircut up that like, you know, it's, it's going to grow back. You'd be, you'd be surprised. Yeah, as uh, normal people would think that, I would think that, you know, that's what normal people would think. But we're very, very particular about the haircut, especially uh, when you get to a certain price range. Okay, okay, I'll give you that. I mean, I mean, I, I will give you that. I, and I just said, because as a man, you know, it's a it's a haircut, man. Like, it, there's nothing to it. I've heard that men are more particular about their haircuts than women. I mean, I would agree with that. I have the same barber for the last however. <laughs> I think they're more loyal. I don't know about, I don't know. Uh, I've, I've talked to the number of probably, them. Probably. Mine says, no, no, guys are harder, but I'd still prefer them. They're more picky in particular about the way that the hairs look. Is it female? Compared huh. to females, yeah. It's a female barber. Oh, yeah, yours is, yeah. So I think that that's the, kind of the case. Because with me, I would never want to cut a female. She's, she's like rough and tough from Gnarlin. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, she's like she's like 58. If I cut it else here and she and I messed up, dude, they're going to they're gonna be very upset. They may not say anything. A, male, a man will say something. Versus the opposite, if if she messes something up, they're just gonna they're gonna be upset, but they'll probably just go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah they probably just won't come back. Yeah, that makes mm-hmm. sense. Whereas I, I will say, I think most men be like, hey, it's not quite quite what I was expecting, and come back or whatever, and be like, hey man, or even I mean, not even say anything, and the next time they come back, be like, hey man, can, most people can say, can you just yeah, right? Come on, go, turn on your mic, boss. But, right, it's like I would just be like, ah, it's cool, whatever. Have the wife fix it at home, right? And then the next time you're like, hey, so just make sure last time you kind of kind of fuck me up, there. <laughs> dude. I I prefer I want somebody to say something, right? In the in the moment, I particularly, right? Because that's, that's a reputation. Reputation. That's that's my business. That's what yeah. I'm doing, and I want it to be. I want you to leave like perfect, you know, and what you feel is perfect. And if not, definitely say something next time. Like I a little differently. I don't I don't really like. It's happened to me not not recently, but in the past where someone wasn't exactly perfectly happy with their haircut and they would uh they would wait until a week two weeks three weeks later and then then they you know or, or even hours later they'll write a review and say something negative and i'm just like could have just said something then say it beforehand so it's funny it, so uh tim you cut my hair like you know as regular as it's ever been at this point uh but uh you do something where you and it's like a barber thing right you hand out you hand in the mirror Right. Make sure you look at your hair. How do you like your hair? Um, and I wonder if there's not a way you could build a process to make sure that that person is officially happy. Like Brayden, make sure that they get a they get a uh, what what a fucking picture before they leave. 
yeah whatever, right and it sounds stupid mm-hmm. but like can i take your picture can i do this it's kind of like your farewell right and like for me what i have is i, I have a final walkthrough so like before i ever bill anybody i go out and i walk the job site and make sure that the job that i sold got done to my standard uh and i wonder if and because like you said it hasn't happened recently but i wonder if as terrible as it sounds like here's the mirror plus my phone with a google review go ahead and leave me that google review right now i don't i don't, I don't, I don't like pressing well, okay it, it feels it people don't like pressing oh i agree I, with I that like pressing you know so i i typically try not to press i've done things where it's like hey if you leave one give you five dollars off on this one here what are, i meant i meant more for certifying that they leave with a happy haircut versus you don't like leaving, it, it, like whether they give the the because like i don't ask for a review in my final walkthroughs i just make sure they're happy that's it like and then afterwards i remind them casually like once or twice that hey i would love a google review if you don't give it to i I, like I'm not gonna bug you for it. I have three mirrors you look at. So I hand you the personal one, you have the big one, and then you have one before you walk out. That's true. I'm hoping at one of those three points, if you're not happy with it, you just say something. You would say something. You'd be like, Hey, I'm not happy with this, or I want this different. I don't believe different. a lot of people will say something. I agree. They don't. None of they my don't. clients they don't. they don't. Like I have to force it out of all my clients. Yeah. All of, over the last decade. There's not one. If they do because people don't like it's, to be asked it's rare. It's really rare. They would rather just fire and find somebody else. And I'm like, if you would have said something I could have fixed it. It would have been an easy thing. It wouldn't have been that hard. Like, you know, or maybe I would have credited or, you know. Man, I love that you said that. I actually had that happen to me this week. I have a customer who I just started building a relationship with. And twice he's reached out to me about, frankly, situations that I didn't manage good enough. And he's like, hey, yeah. is this is this price right? It kind of looks a little, little high. And I look back at my numbers and I'm like, at 60% profit. I'm like, hey, brother, I'll give you a bad discount. We're like, we don't need that kind of, that kind of profit. Yeah, I'm not trying to hose nobody. Uh, and I love it because I would rather you reach out and tell me that you feel this is unfair for whatever reason. And we figure out the relationship and continue the relationship. Then you just hire the, somebody else next time because you're upset because you feel like I overpriced. Yeah. Like, Hey, that's fair. I I'm all for bringing value here. Um, but a lot of people, like you said, they just, they won't say it. They're just like, ah, whatever. Next time I'll find somebody else. They don't, they don't want to feel like they're complaining. They don't, right. they don't be whiny and complainers. Like, yeah, but okay, but is that like, is that like a cultural thing? Because man, there's for me it is. It, it's a cultural thing because because I feel like I work I work with a lot of Mexicans, a lot of Hispanics, bro. We'll tell you straight up, and I feel like a lot of other cultures are very cut and dry and tell you whether or not they like things. And the American culture is a very polite culture. I have I, a lot. Of, I have a lot of clients from Israel, and over there it's it's very particular, and they're not afraid to bring their cultural barbershop values over here. They'll let you know really quick if they don't like it. And they'll make you fix it. They'll, they don't care if it takes three hours. They they want it perfect, like legitimately perfect. And I don't mind it. You know, that's my career. That's what I do. I want you to be happy. So for me, when it comes, you're right. Most people don't say anything. If they do, it's the next haircut. Like, really, let's do this different. But I try to create more of a client barber connection than I try to make it more. Like, I try to be a friend to everybody. You know? You're almost like a therapist. Yeah. My barber's a therapist, I mean, man. Like, I sit there and I just do, I do the it. chair. Sometimes I just sleep and say nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I try to create that connection. So I try it that way, but I'm always like, yeah, yeah dude, she feels so good. That's <laughs> just, they do like sleep. anything extra, like the paraffin hand wax, or like the scalp massage, or like the face towels. No, do anything like that. I, I would I bring it because I love that shit. <laughs> that's, so that's different. I'm like blue collar, blue collar guy. I'm like, just cut my hair, cut my beard. Have you I'm done like, it right? though? Oh, have you? Yes, done- and it's it's not. It's just not my thing. I would I would do it. And it's not that I don't do it. I'll do a shampoo. I'll do the scalp wash. I'll drain the skin, shampoo if you want to with tea tree, all that fancy stuff. It's a little bit extra than what I normally charge. Yeah. For me, kind of just more, just want to get the haircut, get the beard. I yeah. want you to be happy about what you're what you're getting. Yeah. And if you requested other stuff, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And it's going to be a little bit extra. And it's not going to be a base charge. It's yeah. more time. Right. More. There's more value. More. Yeah. more re- right. And I have that option on there. The option is on my website to do those things. I don't. I think I've done it maybe three times in the year that I mm. had it on. Yeah, so it's just not super common for people to want the whole shebang. Now, sometimes people be like, "Hey, I got to run here and get a shampoo." I usually, if that's the case, can I get a shampoo? I got to go back to work or whatever. I mean, I usually don't charge yeah. extra because it's two, three minutes max. You know, yeah. but I'm, there's a, I'm there's gonna a do that next time. I'm like, "Yo, Tim, can you shampoo my hair? I got to go plant this tree." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do it. You know, <laughs> if you if you tell me. Free hands, like if you just want it done twice just to do it, it's gonna be it's only five dollars. It's not like hey, this. bro, will you massage my head? Yeah, that's I don't know. <laughs> I can't give you a good tip. See, <laughs> ain't no party like a blue studio party. Let me tell you, 
He said he knew oh, it's dude. on his menu. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. I, I asked him earlier if he wanted a modest tip or lunch. I like the man hey, He went for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He asked me if I wanted a modest tip or lunch. I said, dude, mahogany sounds so good. I was like, well, okay. We went to Kava. <laughs> dude, a Kava. It's pretty good. Some next level. Yeah, I love that. Place. Delicious. I like, oh. Tyler had it the first time. She's like, have you had this yet? And I, I try all kinds of stuff. And the first one, she's like, you haven't had it. She's like, it's like Chipotle, but like Mediterranean. And I was like, oh, you know, cool. And then like months later, somebody invited me and I was like, holy shit, it's literally like Chipotle, but Mediterranean, this shit's, that's what's up. It's yep. pretty good. Yep. Yeah. To me, it's more fresh than Chipotle. It tastes more fresh. It's all the same. Probably. Kind of. It's like tomato, tomato. Yeah. They're different. But same, I, same but, thing. But they both showed up in the same truck. Different. Uh, kind of. You said they were the same, but they're different. But they are kind of. I guess. Kind of. One's kava, one's chipotle. Oh, man. Kava chicken, maybe it's just placebo. Just taste. You know, kava doesn't give you, or uh, chipotle doesn't give you near as much meat. I don't go eat at either one of those very often, I'll be honest. Same. Yeah, I, mean, I, I eat at home like 90% of the time for lunch, almost almost every day. I had a Hawaiian roll sandwich for lunch. That sounds, that sounds good. Fantastic. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I had chicken tacos. But I go home for lunch because it, it minimizes what I have to pick to eat every day because I just eat leftovers every day. Yeah, chicken same. tacos, we never <laughs> had kava. Just, okay, but that was one time. So he had double lunch? No? Well, he was talking about what he had for lunch today. Well, the, my lunch, that was like at like 10, 30. It was like late breakfast. You know, it's a snack. Dude, when you wake yeah. up at 4 o'clock in the morning, well, 4 30, I don't. like my lunch is at 9 to 10 o'clock. For me, dude. Like, Braden would text me. The other day, he texted me at like 8 30. I was like, I was literally about to close my eyes and go to bed. And then next yeah. morning, he was in bed waiting for I was in day. bed, literally, I was waiting for him to text nice. me. And then first thing in the morning, I texted him back. Like it, it, almost every time it's like five, six o'clock in the morning, Brandon will get a text back. I'm like, he'll text me back like nine when he's got the kids off to school and everything's set. When he gets settled into, into work. I hate but, when you text me at six in the morning. Dude, it's- I don't it, mind it. It's when my mind works. Like I, if you text me like, uh, I may, I try not to do it after eight o'clock. Oh, I, I text you, shit. I just, but if I text you like shit. 10 or 11, I'm like, he's going to text me at four o'clock in the morning or whatever. Yeah. Did you wake up when he texts you? No, fuck no. He I'm up. I do. I'm already up. Oh, I'm not up. Well, not in the morning. In the morning? No, in the morning, no. yeah. No, no. See, I do. It, wait, my phone, it just, I don't know why. It doesn't. Usually, I dude, just like, oh. Usually, One time, <laughs> not like that. One, one time, I texted this dude. I told him I was going to be at his house to fix his irrigation. And then I texted him when I left my house. He never answered me. I was like, he's fucking asleep. And I show up at his house, and I text him again. And I was like, this motherfucker's asleep. And I was like, I don't want this dog to come out here and fucking eat me when I'm sitting my here trying to weighs eight pounds. He is dog. Oh. His dog weighs like 80 pounds, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm not out running his dog. That fucking mouth is eating me. Now. He's just a boy. He, <laughs> <laughs> he is, honestly. He's a good dog. But it, but nonetheless, at the time, I was like, it's like 7 o'clock in the morning because I get my day started early. And then I show up and I was like, there's nobody. So I knock on the door. Nobody answers. I was like. I'm fucking breaking. I'm waking Braden up right now. His whole family's asleep. I was like, but I got to get this shit over with because I got work to do. And I'm just over here trying to get. When it. was this? This is probably last year. Anyways, his wife just... wakes up and she's like, oh, he's waking up. I'm like. With the irrigation? Yes. I remember. It was like his wife's wake up. Oh, he's coming. I was like, motherfucker was asleep. Was it like nine o'clock? It was like nine o'clock on a Saturday. I was like, oh, work yeah, dude. Yeah, I don't blame you one bit. Dude, I only sleep get about up, five hours early. a night. Like four and a half, five hours a day through during the week, and it's like my there. goal is six and a half hours if I can hit it. Outside of that, like my weekends, like I sleep in. I can, yeah. sometimes I don't get it up. How, how do you sleep in? You know? How? I was about to ask the same thing. If your mind is so sick, <laughs> kind of difficult, right? You no. Know? To do what? To sleep you, in? Yeah. On Saturdays. I, why, why wouldn't I? I'm confused. Because you're like going. All the time. Like, how do you, my, your mind is always telling you, like, hey, we got to do this, we got to do that. How do you sleep in on fucking Saturdays and Sundays? Just routine to sleep just, in. My, 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 my body just shuts down. Makes sense. I don't know. My, it's exhausted. Well, that's yeah, my I'm body. Literally <laughs> exhausted by the weekend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I still have to work tomorrow. So, okay. So, well, but I don't have to be here till like, 10 o'clock, so it's fine. Okay, but how long will you work? Till like, 1 or 2. Fuck that. I'd rather show up at fucking 6 and be gone by 11. We have different kind of businesses. Uh -huh. No, because by the time I get home, different rhythms. But by the time I get home, it's like seven o'clock. I'll see my daughter for an hour, hour and a half. I'll get her to bed. I'll probably shower, and change, then have like two or three hours hanging out with the wife, and probably play games or something, and then go to bed around eleven or twelve. And then, you know, I try to. I'm gonna sleep like eight hours. Leia will be up around eight, no later than. That's another reason. It's like, how do you sleep that late with the kids? Well, Leslie and I take turns. Like 
it just really depends. Like if I'm really exhausted and bust my ass throughout the week, you know, and she can, like, she'll just get out of bed in the morning, just go take care of Leia, get her. A lot of times she'll get, I love it. I love this. Well, I'll stay in bed. She'll get out of bed, go get Leia from the crib, bring her back and set her down with me with a bottle. And, and then me and her just cuddle for like 20 minutes and pass out. It's yeah. great. There's nothing like little kid cuddles, man. Like yeah. that is, oh, those are the best. Right now I'm in that stage where, where, uh, Emilia, she's four. She's learning how to, well, she knows she's potty trained, but at night she has, she wets the bed every now and again. And I don't even get mad anymore. Like when she wets the bed, she goes in the bathroom, takes off her clothes. Huh? Thanks after her dad. <laughs> <laughs> Were you bed wetter? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but she she gets up and she's four. She changes herself, gets everything. She comes over to the bed. God, I pee. All right, baby girl, come cuddle up next to me. I just go right back to sleep. And then like 30 minutes later, an hour later, I'm like, fuck, I can't sleep. I get up and I go sleep on the couch. So kind of sucks, but I just yeah, love those cuddles. On purpose now, to just sleep. she does. I literally, I told her that. Oh, I said, man. I said, you just know you're gonna cuddle with dad. And, yeah, I'm like, I'm not even mad, like, because I know at some point that that stage is gonna be over, right? Like your boys are, dude, they're grown. They don't come to with Cole, like that, dude. If we got into that, Cole, I, uh, he passed out in my bed the other night, and I brought him. I was taking him to his bed, and I scooped him up. He's a big kid now. Yeah, yeah, he's a big kid. human. Oh my god. And yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's like a it's it's a weird feeling for sure, but that's why like for me I'm like at four years old yeah I'm gonna soak this in you can you can pee the bed and and we'll deal with it. I don't even care because oh I just love the cuddles I love the love and you know the sleep that I don't get maybe one day I'll get it like when I'm dead yeah. but it is what it is so Tim tell us uh what what else is up in your life what else you got going on you're a business owner. You got a podcast? Yeah. What's your podcast, podcast about? I do. Sports okay. podcast. Okay, that's cool. It's a good time. These guys like sports. Yeah, we like sports. I don't. I, you know. I, I know. But but they know. Yeah. What kind of sports? It's, it's mainly football. We do college football. That's kind of what our base is. But uh, that's my main sport, football, UFC. How do you feel about OU going to the SEC? I mean, I'm an OSU fan. So my partner's an elite fan. But how do I feel? No, I mean... I like the rivalry, even though we never won it. It's kind of fun to be in it. You won it like 14 years ago. It's fine. Well, we won the most recent last year. Yeah. <laughs> 14 years ago. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> we won two of the last two of the last three, but it's okay. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. The, they got rid of the Big 12 name. Now it's called Big, right? No, there's still Big 12. Yeah. Isn't it still Big 12? The Who big, took it in place? The Big 10 is just big. It's just big. The Big Ten is okay. The Big Twelve, uh, they put in a lot of you know people in place. There's nobody that's really OU's place. I mean, if you're talking TV terms, OSU took over. They have their OU schedule. That's why we have all these freaking 11 a.m. games. Ah, uh, because typically what they do is they have you know everybody has a every conference has like a uh, not every conference every night ABC has a primetime game. Fox mm-hmm. has a primetime game. ESPN. Well, Fox is with the Big Ten, so it's either ABC or ESPN. Mm-hmm. And uh, then they have a primetime morning game. So it's based on viewership of what teams want to see. And obviously everybody wanted to see the Big 12. They wanted to watch OU play football. So they always got those 11 a.m. games. Well, now they're in the SEC. And they're like 6 p.m. Yeah. They had to give that 11 a.m. slot to whoever the next most wanted team was, which was in Texas, also gone. Now it's Oklahoma State, so we got all the 11 a.m. games. That's probably my biggest problem with them going to the SEC is now we got these 11 a.m. games week in and week out. That sucks. I had to sign up for YouTube TV now. Yeah, just so I have the options to watch the games. Oh, Other man. than that, they're like on. Lame. They're on. They're all different. They're everywhere. All of them. Mm-hmm. Like they're all, you got to have Amazon Prime, and then you got to have Hulu, and then you got to have Disney, and then you got to have this, and they're like SEC Network. If you're SEC Network. And then you go. Oh my god. Texas, Texas, Texas has their own network. Texas. Texas. Oh my god. So I don't do this for ESPN Plus. I'm so done with that too. Yeah. <laughs> this guy came over the other day. He brings out his iPad, puts up football. I was like, oh, I forget people do that. Yeah. yeah, I brought my speaker and my iPad, just set it up with children on the patio. Big That's UFC cool. guy, too. I watch all the UFC events. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Love UFC. Do you ever go to the some of the fights here in Tulsa? I've been like, to a few uh, of them. Fury. Uh, what's the other one here? Maybe just Fury. But yeah, the River Spirit. Yeah, they're cool. I mean, they're... It's entertaining. I, I don't want to say they're low-level fighters, but they're not. They're not UFC fighters. By no means. Yeah, they're not like pay-per-view. No. Cool experience. I think they do a good job for the River Spirit. The lighting's good. Sound system's down, good. Down. It's fun to watch. Did you see the Smoking Guns? Did yeah. you go to that one? Not this last year. I went to the one before. 
I went my first I, first time I went was this last one. I heard it was the best one too. That was pretty good. Been to a few of them. I like oh. smoking gun. It's fun. Yeah. Oh, cops versus cops firefighters. firefighters. It's like the first time cops have won in like fifteen years. But really? They, they fight? Yeah. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh they do a little mix. Pop pop. Yeah, usually they'll do boxing, kickboxing, and UFC. Or MMA. Dude, I'd watch that shit. I'm rooting for firefighters all day long. Well, they usually win because they got nothing else to do besides train. Right. Yeah. Well, obviously, <laughs> I want to root for the winner. <laughs> well, yeah. Like a loser? <laughs> they're usually... It's, all, it's almost not fair. Yeah. They're, they're, <laughs> I'm I mean, stuck in this house for 24 hours a day waiting for a fucking fire. You know? What else are you going to do? A fire, fire, medical emergency, and that just happens a couple times an hour. Work out. I mean, yeah. yeah. If you're not if you're not on call, you're probably working out or sleeping. I've ever listened to the training. police scanner... Or being a landscaper or a roofer or always stuff. Yeah, a lot of them do have secondary jobs. I know. Like, most of my competition is firefighters. That's what I would do, honestly. If I if I was a firefighter, I cut hair. Like like almost, I'd say probably eighty percent of my competition is firefighters. Fighters, yeah. If you're not a real legit company, you're probably a firefighter. Absolutely. And it's like, damn, that sucks because they they got way better competitive rates. I mean, they got literally no over. They don't need the job. They're bored. That's it. Like they're just bored. It's so they literally don't them. need the job. They're just like, ah, eh, I'm bored. I'm at home four days a week. It's like I work 24 hours hours on, 24 hours off. So I, I'm bored. So why not have a job? I like, do random stuff like gutters. Yeah. Like literally it's like random stuff. But but what it is, is it's a low entry laborious work that they're doing. Sure. Right. It's all like uses like firefighter. Right. Like, right. But volunteer. Nonetheless. I mean, <laughs> a lot of them are volunteered. Not if, if, if I was a firefighter, I'll be honest. I'd probably be a landscaper team. Yeah. Easy. That's what I, if I was a firefighter, I'd do what I do now. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just going to borrow the fire truck real quick to use a slatter to go put up some Christmas lights. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I mean, they'd love to see the lights on while I'm putting them up. You know, you should ask. You should, I'm dead serious. Okay. In the next few months, find a fire station, just ask and be like, hey, can we do something fun together to where we put up Christmas lights? And it's our station in ARC. Let's just go to a church and just take a quick picture and you guys go about your day. You know what? I got leadership drinks and I'm going to the fire station in two months to go meet the fire station. It literally like, I think, November 9th. I'm going to go meet the fire station. It's just a stud drinks. shot. So that, that actually is pretty smart. It's smart. Yeah. I actually hey, thought and, of a commercial I'm going to try to And shoot. when you do that, try to, try to figure out how you can show some support to the local firefighters. And what that would look like, like get them some wine, take a them video some barbecue, and like say, "Hey, can we do this and light a fire?" And like, yeah, I'll light a fire. You know, can hey we guys, talk about hey, job security? Maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> you make a post about you know you guys installing <laughs> Christmas lights safely, so you don't cause electrical fires. So then it benefits both you and them, and you're also promoting safety. They'll want to cross post it and share it to their stuff, and benefits you. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I was gonna say you could probably offer them this on landscape at the fire department, but all. They they all have somebody, <laughs> but that's right, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's okay. We that's not a bad idea. Probably probably oh, Can't probably we? they're probably all landscape on the side. It's true. So we got onto that one deep. That's what, I'm talking that's about. what happens, dude. It just it, it but it makes it for good conversation, right? I mean, for the most part, I haven't right. had anyone tell us that we're random yet. Usually, we we haven't been we're like most random. of our a lot of our episodes yeah. are not random. Like, will they carry? Yeah, some sort of. Exactly. Yeah. Usually, the you know, podcast episodes have a theme, and everyone sticks on that theme, and nothing changes. But I like ones where they like fluctuate, yeah, change, and very conversational. Over. I have yeah. ADHD internally, so, so not, a, <laughs> not a not a big like. We got to do this. I like vacationing. I can't vacation if it's a set schedule every day, all day. Yeah, it's like it stresses me out. I don't Dude, think we should have internal ADHD. All right, it's external. I don't know if she wants. <laughs> I think everybody ex- experiences your ADHD here, Tim. Just kidding. I have external ADHD. I don't know what you want to call No, not ADHD. That's where you move a lot, right? ADD. That's either the, way. Where you where your mind is always going somewhere random. That's this man. What? Try sitting in an o- ADD. His office is back there and he'll be talking to you and then all of a sudden he's like doing something else and then he'll come back and then he's like doing something else and then come back and he's like, Brandon, what the fuck are you doing? Just working, man. And he's just, he's just heavy. everywhere. I don't. I, I'm I don't a, understand it. I'm, I'm always doing like four tasks at once. No, I'm, I'm like, focused. oh, see, this far I was going. Have, does, do you get your Christmas lights done every year? You do Christmas lights? Does he do them? I do them. Oh, okay. Because wow. I'm a firefighter. <laughs> 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 the, um, got him. The one, the one time that, uh, got him. what was one, that clip? The one time that he, uh, you Sorry. want some of this? I will take some of that. Yeah, the one time that he did my Christmas light, dude, it was 
I had a really steep uh, garage. And this man was like, I'm not doing that. It's like, dude, you better get one of your brothers over here. So like, we did it. The way you're doing him, but it was doing me. It was a little sketch. When are you going to start doing me? Did did help him? Want it. I he did. And honestly, I'm scared to do my my Christmas lights this year because my house is a little bigger. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Well, he didn't even get out. He didn't get on. Uh, what that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. He didn't even get on the roof. We ended up just using a ladder because he's like, "Dude, yeah. I'm not doing that, Steve." So I don't even have a ladder to be able to get to my roof. I'll do. Hey, honestly, I can do your Christmas lights. Me and you can tackle them if you'll pay for the material. It'll be under 150 bucks. Are you actually? I have all the lights. I don't see. No. Oh, you have lights? I, to... I have all the lights. Yeah. Oh, well then, yeah, I'll do them. You have like commercial grade lights, dude. I have commercial. Well, they're from lights. Walmart. Oh god, I hate you, dude. I have commercial grade lights. No, that's from okay. You. The ones yeah, I yeah, sold yeah, yeah. you. Okay, I was like, not the ones we put in the first time. Those are pain in the ass. All right, so, those so, suck. So this, it only gives to you. This is a this is a Doc Swenson blenders cut. We should do your RV. <laughs> 36 21 what is that rap artist that does that 17, 17, 17 hey you know what's funny listen whenever that that song was like super popular i went to a restaurant once like a, a taco truck don don francisco's tacos up in north tulsa and i went up to the drive through and he's like hey your total 1738 i'm like hey. yeah I'm, i was like oh 1738 he's like huh i'm like fucking nothing here's 20 that's petty well. yeah, so this yeah. is 115 proof so you're probably gonna want to like put a little water into it uh, fifty-seven percent alcohol by volume. Age five years. Straight nice. bourbon whiskey. I'll, uh, remind me to bring that rebel next time, dude. It's good. It's in small batches, dude. Fetty Wap was on top of the world back then. What happened to him? I don't know, but he really had a knife in music. Made some money. Probably didn't. Want to, probably didn't want to hang out with Diddy. You guys don't know, but he only had one eye. That that eye joke was funny. What? I said he really had an eye for music. He only had one eye. The other eye was tired. <laughs> that was funny. Scared idiot. <laughs> you know, I found out yesterday. That if you wanted to taste a spirit, you take half of the spirit and half of water and mix it. So like 50-50 parts. And that's how you're supposed to taste spirits. So if you wanted to compare real aspects of a vodka, tequila, gin, rum, whiskey, whatever it is, do equal parts, water and spirit. It's so we're fine, but the flavor is actually really good. No, that's good. Which one is this? It's just announced. Oh, you did. My bad. All right. This is that Seven, Doc Swinson's Swinson Swinson Slingers Cut. Right, right, Five right. years, dude. Five I, years. I'm over here fucking 17, 30, 18. You know what's crazy is like one of the things I really like about like cigars and coffee and whiskeys because like the amount, the different kind of variations that you can get is insane. Like throughout the whole process, you can change it all. And then even more so with some of the things like, like whiskey, for example, it could take five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years before anybody knows what the hell the thing will taste like. Dude, that's how I felt with that bottle. Wild. The, the bottle I got on Wednesday, it's a 10-year bottle. Ten first years. bottle that they released, and it's pretty fucking good. Isn't tequila the same way? I don't think they and age I, tequila the same way. I don't think, I don't do. think, I think, the, think there is an aged tequila, but it's not a big thing. The process is the same with tequila, because most of the time it should. The good tequila comes from the agave, right? That's right. But then bourbons, right. bourbon can be mixed with different kinds of grains. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can be a bourbon, which is sweeter. It could be more rye. It could be more corn, or it could be more you know, whatever kind of grain to kind of turn into whatever it is, you know, and it can be aged different. It can be processed different. It can be distilled different. You know? I don't think the tequila is kind of, it's kind of the same, but there's not as much variation. No. I think it's more, it's either from Mexico or from Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Just well, you forgot whenever they're from Mexico. <laughs> I would know. I know. Well, that's, that's like a whole patented thing. Though. Yeah. And I went to Mexico. I did a whiskey tasting. He's like, it, you get to taste all of them at least once. And it's, it's a half a shot. I was like, oh, well, how boy. Many? It's like, how many are there? Like 14. I was like, Oh, that's seven full shots, brother. He's like, you can try all of them. I said, can I really? So, yeah, I tried every single one of them. I'm like, if I'm getting hammered, yeah, give me all of them. Dude, mm. no, the last whiskey tasting was not light pours. No, no, it wasn't. That was dude, crazy. When we went on Wednesday, the first pour, I'm like, it was a full shot. That's live. We <laughs> give a whole, it's a whole fucking thing. And I'm like, whoo. And I'm not going to lie, it definitely was not my favorite, but I drank all of it because I was like, oh, you got to get the party started. And then that was the, actually, that was actually one of my favorites. That was the, Oh, uh, the OSU water. one. That was the OSU one, wasn't it? Yeah. The first one that we had. So that one actually was pretty good. The second one, which was the well one, I didn't really care for that one. Put a little bit of water and it takes down some of the proof. You can <laughs> taste it a little easier without it being. Yeah, um, I like it. I tried one that was one I was in Mexico. He's like, this one's 100 years old. I was like, how do you know that? You're not 100. So how do you know that this is 100? How do you know it actually made it 100? He said, he, he said, just trust it. I tasted it. It was bomb. It was $350 a bottle. I, like, I don't like whiskey that much. Brother. 
Uh, are you ready? Let's do it. All right. So for those of you who don't know, this is part of the Bruising Business Podcast where we read off the diary with conver- diary with CEO conversation cards. And uh, the point of these is supposed to help empower true human connection to be able to uh, bring different ideas, concepts, thoughts, mindsets, and just uh, different kinds of connections. So the game, uh, the game is not really a game, but bring out a card, read it, take turns, answer the questions, and uh, dive deep. Ready? Let's do it. All right. Uh, gonna try to pronounce the name right. Ro- uh, Rochelle uh, Humes. Uh, Humes is probably some fancy name. I don't know. Uh, if you could turn back the clock on one day this year and do it differently, what day would it be and why? XOXO. Is this, is everybody in? Yes. Yeah. And one day no this year. No turns. We just start. So if you could turn back the clock on one day this year and do it differently, what day would it be and why? Probably none of them. You really just nailed every single day this year? No. Okay. But, but I don't think it was bad enough to say I needed to change it. And if I did change it, what if it would change the outcome of something else that happened? I don't know. I'm a no regrets kind of guy. I just like to- not even one letter. <laughs> just one letter. <laughs> you know that movie? You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you know my biggest my biggest quote unquote regret is you know like tattoos are everyone's biggest regret. And I really wish I didn't have this one sometimes. But then I look at no. it's it's okay. Chinese. And why I did that? I was 18. You know, I had some money. I was like, why not? And I don't regret it. But in my head, I'm like. Have... that's a few years too long ago this yeah, this year buddy yeah, when i know but well i would say I like there's some days that i've had something i could change my mood. i've i've got a problem this year to where I, like it's hard for me to be home and i think we talked about this like a couple weeks ago too and um i'm trying to figure out how to get back in that direction to like when i'm home i don't know how to be home yeah and i don't right. i, I don't because uh, i'm just such an uh whatever kind of mindset that is of go get it done you've got to provide you got to create and you got to work and except on Saturday and Sunday. Like, where you sleep in yeah yeah but but <laughs> then in, but then like oh, okay so like then on those days let's say i don't sleep in let's say i'm up at like yo because there has been some weekends where less than are up at like six six seven a.m yeah. and and then we like we have breakfast and start the chores and you know cole i'm coaching cole's football now do you know that dude yeah that's pretty see that's how you do it i'm a flag just goal, like that flag you slowly coach. start start reading this he's he's a coach basketball so, coach i was like was was my last year oh but i'm trying to like connect more with the family and like spend more time because like yeah. a lot of times i'm like i don't want to do anything because i'm tired <laughs> i'm so yeah. burnt out from the week but then the, like that's not fair to my family so like i'm trying to acknowledge that and there's like no particular day but there's just some days throughout the last year i'm like i could have done better but, yeah I, i'm sure there's something internally this year that i'm like you're gonna be in bed tonight, and you're gonna wake. You're gonna know. wake up. It's you're gonna, gonna be like, oh, "Damn, that was the day. That was the day. Make sure you taste it to me so I can tell you." I don't. Care. I'm just kidding. Come on now. He's never responded. It's supposed to be like, vulnerable. I don't know. <laughs> don't ever respond like that. I don't. Come on, dude. You get the same text he gets, or, or similar. That hey, hope you have a beautiful day. This guy randomly gets them too. Dude, just I feel like, so special when you do it. Just hope you have a good day. He's cool. just feeling about you today. You a good morning text. He did yesterday. So it's just randomly. It's nice to get those. You're like, oh. You know I, what? What? Thanks. I don't know if I will, but I thanks. feel like that I should reciprocate that to you. But then I go, no, that's your thing. Yeah, it's your space. So it's just, not the same. So. It's just nah. I just do it sometimes. But then you know, there's that thing where like I probably won't tell you happy birthday. Like I probably won't do those things. Like I just won't. But I'll tell you. I hope you have a great. You day. Used to never celebrate birthdays, but you're doing it the last year. Well, I mean, I celebrate my kids' birthdays. I don't celebrate my birthdays. Like, it's not a big deal. I still remember my wife. We turned birthday. 30 this year. Dude, we, we should have done a dirty 30 party. We did jump on, we jump on an airplane on one of his birthdays. Yeah, that's cool. I used to. Were I you on his back or was he on yours? Neither. Believe it or not, we both had something <laughs> on our backs. <laughs> <laughs> and he made us rub a pig before him. Hey, it was piglet, man. It was you piglet. Can't, you can't say that about piglet. What did they ever have? That's, that's what he made us do. <laughs> He, he made us rub the you had a rub piglet for good luck. Piglet for good luck. Pig belly. For good luck. No, hey, but we landed land. and we didn't die, so it obviously was, it worked. It wasn't his belly. You barely landed, dude. I landed. He did land. It got really windy, and he had to like. It was fun. He ended up going way far off from the landing. We we're spot. supposed to wrestle an alligator next, and we never. We did. haven't done it. We're right. Okay, how old are you? Thirty. Okay, cool. Do you have any kids? No. Married. Yep. How long? Six years. October second, next week. Cool. Congrats. That'll be my. One year, round two in November. So I was married for six years prior to. Cool. Made a made a change. Love mine. Love my wife. Love happens. 
Life happens. Life happens. Yeah, it was a yeah. shotgun wedding, the first one. Yeah. It was fun. It is She's fun. a good mom. Yeah. The, the second one? Or the first, wait, both, both, one, both, both are good moms. Both are good moms. The, shotgun the first one. Yeah, my, yeah, my first one. Yeah, and she's a good mom and everything, too. So it's I so like we, we co-parent, which means you're pregnant and you were married. Got it. Catholic family, Catholic background. A lot of that was in stuff like that. You or her? Me. A lot of my family is kind of like that. I was like, all right, you know. Like the one I didn't, I didn't know much it. about. Yeah. Wait, I didn't know that. What? That it was like that with you and her? But yeah, we got married six months later after we found out. Dude, I've and then for like three years. I don't know knew that. Hmm. Moved out, got on one better apartment. Had cool. Lived there for less than a year. Man. Bought a house nine months later. I know what that. And then lived like. there for about four or three years, give or take. Uh, Just a rough relationship. Yeah. yeah. Like, anyway, so yeah, it was good. Yeah. So I mean, like okay. me and her still co-parent really well with Cole and we communicate and all that stuff. So it's good. Yeah. Fortunate that it's not like, you know, the other, the other horror story of that, what it right. could be. Right. So, what it could be for sure. Yeah. So we're both like respectful of each other. It's good. And that's it's, awesome. That's good for Cole, man. That's what it's about. Yeah. We yeah. got married and then I moved in. Actually, I got married like way after that, dude. We, 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 it's true, you did. We, I feel like you've been married for so long. So that's crazy because Kylie showed up and never left. We like got married after, dude. She like I did showed the same up thing. like two months later and then she never left. So, like, when people ask us how long we've been married, I'm like six years, five, six years. But then, like, when people ask us how long, when you're like, oh, you're new, I'm like, oh, yeah, we've been together for like 12 years. Like, oh, I'm like, well, like married like at the links, five or right. six right but we literally met at the links in 2013 and we started staying together like within two months of of getting to know each other and i don't throw out all that was that it was the uh, um movie theater correct? yeah right and then after that it's just like we literally lived together and then it's funny because we talk about how all that happened and like kyla and i we we our relationship almost just happened naturally like from the get-go when we first got our first apartment together within like six months a year being together we like got a bank account together and everything was just like yep. we were we were one from from day one um and that was just kind of the way it goes so when you say like how long you've been married it's like, well, i think i married this girl pretty shortly after i met her like well, legally for everybody we're talking whole nother. married you know and by ter- by proper vocabulary and truth yeah but i mean you know not how here, long have you been together because yeah uh, that's have you ever, ever been around the wild side of able no he has it. I would love to. He's never. Is seen there that a ticket to this? Is there an a no. date, time, and place? Yeah. And, and, and also, Kayla does it take to get that? <laughs> Let me tell you this. Tim, <laughs> Tim tells you this. Tim tells you this because he achieved dates. Tim has been okay. to some oh, really sweet. good parties that I've thrown or just been a part of. But I grew up, man, and I had. I just don't do that anymore. I would. I need I've got, to. I've got a credit card to the pretty high limit. You want to go to Vegas? I dude? need to get him a tequila <laughs> worm. It's over with. <laughs> <laughs> let's be real i mean i think if you you got me and my wife out and knowing we didn't have to go back to the kids for a couple of days no i would probably be like all right but knowing that i have to go back to my kids the next day or no your it, kids are taken like, care of and it's me you and him it would need it, we would need i would need a couple of days to recover recoup. you wouldn't just need like a power raid and a no of bread? Bro, no just, yeah i'm a little different you I'm see like, I, he's I'm, lying yeah, he he, no, he, I think I'd he need a power rate and another shot, and then they, I'd be good to go the next morning. Yeah, but it's been a while since I've actually got <laughs> like that sausage biscuit dude. McDonald's. It's it's fun though. We used to go to IHOP. Or, we did. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. Or oh my god, Waffle House. Yeah. Between two and four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Some they got Fire. their the, well duh, the best cook in the house is in there. Two to my wife won't go to Waffle House. She's like, it's gross. Uh, it is, but, but it's part of the experience. I'm like, yeah. that's the American experience, bro. The Waffle House, yeah. Yeah, it is. Like, that's what gave him the citizenship. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to America now. <laughs> First time I met Tim, bro, we got to take you to Waffle House. I can't have you going around like this. <laughs> okay, play the scene. Oh. What happens? Oh, Mexican man. walks into Waffle House. He sits down at the real long high top bar, and the person's flipping a pancake, turns around and goes, oh, Here. I forgot. Here's a green card. <laughs> Welcome to America. Where, how does that play out? And then he went and bought a Mustang. Uh, the, the, well, that probably happened. I think it played out because I thought I was supposed. To, they, they thought I was supposed to be behind the kitchen, as you know. <laughs> yeah. and like, oh, no, no, we don't hire you know, Mexicans. It. Waffle House only hires you know <laughs> native citizens. Juan, so what are you doing? Y'all make sure. He was driving a five O to prove himself. It's yeah, good. I good. did. 
I was back in the car days, back when I was young and dumb, but we grew up. You met me in the grown up stage now, but man, I did have a stupid part of my life. And people would call it stupid. No, it was fun. It was fun. I was young and dumb and free. Uh, and Braden, we we haven't had the. I think the closest thing I probably got to that was at the Irish Rest. Was pro- and I wasn't anywhere near close to like wild. It like white. I'm talking like white, white girl wasted. wasted. That was no dude. That was like I'm dancing with my wife to some good music. Wasted. That was not. Oh man. What would you say the last time you actually did that was a birthday party? Be careful. No. Don't incriminate yourself. Since no. then, since the birthday, party? it's been after be the birthday. Now, it might have been the, her birthday party, but no, I think it's after that. Like it's been. It, dude, I'm sorry. I thought he was your friend. <laughs> it might have been the birthday party, though. It might have been the Hard Rock the last time we got that. It was fun. But again, it, you know, there, there's been this thing where, okay, so when I talk to other people and my family specifically, my family, we're, dude, we're Mexican. We like to have fun. We know how to have fun. But when I talk to my family and they're like, oh, man, you don't go out and do these things. And I'm like, my crazy is a lot more tame than their crazy. Uh, and I think a lot of that comes down to like, well, you know, I've always had like this crazy big dream. So even when I was getting crazy in those times and times, like most of the time was we're at home, not going anywhere else or yeah. like we're going to eat and that's it. Like I would split an Oktoberfest table with you. The only thing is, is my team doesn't want to go party with me because apparently they think they party harder than I do. I know for sure I can party harder than everyone in this office. I, I, Kevin, I think, listen, I, I, right I think I would now. agree with that. The problem is you can't turn off work and party. Yes, You're I continuously can. working. Not at the Oktoberfest. What? Oh, wait. I'm thinking Irish Fest. Oktoberfest. I don't know how. I'm not going to be here. Remember? What are you trying to be in Dallas? You're trying to pick his race. You can't figure it out. What? Oktoberfest. Irish Irish Fest. Fest. Dude, I'm German and Irish. (laughs) We're drinking our boys. We went (laughs) to the Irish Fest together (laughs) and it was fun. Braden was working the whole time, but I had a great time. But I was hot. Yeah. I mean, I got paid to work. He was lit. But he was. I was lit the whole time. It was great. Drove around in a golf cart. That was pretty hate. Yeah. Yeah. I got paid, VIP service. I got paid to make social media content the whole time. There we go. Cool. I loved it. Yeah, it was, it was a badass event. It was, it was really it cool, was dude. Fun. That Friday though, it really sucked because it dropped from like, like oh, like eighty five so and sunny down to like thirty nine and six hours. And then the after and there was the pre party was fun too. The pre party was really the pre party was fun, but then it got better on Saturday. Yeah, and then Sunday was pretty chill. But yeah, so I mean, they're gonna do it again. I don't know if I'm a part of it or not. I know. They probably don't want me involved until December. Until 90 days day out. Of, yeah, right. And the then day. they're like, hey, we have no ticket. Did I tell you about this other festival that wanted to hire me? Mm-mm. Crazy. Let me tell you. This is why. This is what drives me up a freaking wall. He complains and then he does it anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> because it's, I, like the, I like the challenge. I still like the challenge. So this festival comes up and they go, hey, can you help us marketing and everything with the festival? I'm like, Sure. I w- yeah, I would love to. This sounds a lot of fun. I love EDM. I love house music. Blah, blah, blah. It's cool. It's dope. Yeah, I'm down. You know, like boots with the fur kind of girls there and stuff like that, right? Or, and people, whatever. Um, so you just ate I'm yourself. like, I'm like, this is, yeah, I did. This is, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's cool. Because the people that are listening probably they know probably that. Song. <laughs> 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 They're going to, yeah. They probably you know you heard yeah, that song right. playing. I'm so I said that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's 90 days out. They have no website. Oh, if I, God. they have no Facebook page. They have no Instagram page. If I Google the festival, I don't find out anything. And they're ninety days out, and they want to price tickets at like one hundred and twenty-five dollars a ticket plus. Tulsa Irish Festival, for example, was they had a hard time at twenty-five and thirty dollars a ticket or whatever. But their target was families. You want a family of four, five, six, whatever to like spend a hundred some dollars in tickets plus food plus entertainment, you know, whatever else. That didn't happen. It. You know, those ticket prices had to dro- drop down, which is another issue why, like, we had a whatever. So this festival, and uh, I was like, okay, yeah, but there's there's a laundry list of things that we have to tackle. Like, one, I just finished up the Toss Irish Festival, which, like, I well, we did everything in our power to, like, knock that thing out of the park on our on our. I thought watch. it was pretty good. And then, um, just from what I was responsible for. But she's like, they, they were like, no, um, we want you to, like, use my team and everything. I'm like, wait, you want me to hold the responsibility for people that you've put together and the performance of how many people show up is going to be my fault. Like there's so many other variables to this one. I'm not comfortable with doing that. Cause like I'm going to hold most of the control if I'm in charge of the department and I'm going to control as many of those variables as I can, you know, 
And the people was, and I'm like, I'm like, and, and how, what's our budget? You know, it's like, do, do we have like 60, 70, hundred thousand dollars somewhere in that ballpark? We don't have anything. It's just volunteer. And we've already paid everyone else or whatever. I'm like, I'm not doing this for free. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, they were crazy. Crazy. I mean, the first year event too, no money spent, you know, at least like we promoted the shit out of Tulsa Irish Festival. And like we put in a bunch of free work, a bunch of PR work. The news picked up on it. The I radio it picked good. up on it. We got free billboards through. It was a it was a collaborative within the airport leaders and stuff. Yeah, I remember uh, that one was paid. What's his name came in and he saw that as soon as he walked in. They uh, uh, JP. JP. Yeah. JP. Yeah, I kicked him out of his office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see that. Yeah, see that. Yeah, apparently, so upstairs is moving out right above us. Oh no way! And so I told JP, I was like, "You go do your thing upstairs." So what's going on up there? Uh, they're just they moved to Brookside. They out, uh, she outgrew. Okay, so cool, very cool. I'm on that train too. I know. You know what? One new I'm, hires within 30 days. I'm resigning my lease, so I'm pretty excited about that. Get to have a, a meeting with the landlord on Monday. Going to restructure some stuff in our lease and hopefully get a little bit of a handout on our lease and, mm-hmm. and be able to help out our landlord. She's she's phenomenal landlord and when i say phenomenal i mean i pay my bill and she leaves me the fuck alone it's fantastic so now i just need to tell her to stay out of my way my landlord's great too you yeah. and and uh i think she's gonna be like yeah the great sign wherever the hell you want to sign because she doesn't care do you rate uh, going up uh it goes up three percent per year uh but it's really it's negligible. standard it's negligible uh, but what really right now she's, didn't got, go up at all. she's got the space next yeah. to me going up the last three years hasn't changed nice so the space next to me is going up for lease in October as well. And she asked me if I wanted it. And by- In the same lot? The same building. Yeah. Yeah. So no lie, my my idea was if I get it, I'm going to- Behind you in the building? Yes. I thought about it. Like, hey, Tim, you want to come barber out of this shop? I'll fucking charge you next to nothing. But anyway- It's just like what? Like a mile from 75? It's right off that know? dude. It's, so like, it's good location. But anyways- uh, Tucked away. She's thinking about- she, she The person behind me is moving out. And she asked us if we want to take the lease. Well, that's another 5,000 square feet, which according to my lease, that would double my lease. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can't work like a really good deal because either she has to lease it to somebody that's unknown and she has no idea, or she leases it to me for a really good deal for five years. And she knows I paid my rent on time every year for three years. I cleaned up the property and so on and so forth. Frankly, if it was me, I'd be leasing it to me for a really fucking good deal. And then, you know, figure it out in the back end. Isn't it a gym? Yeah. It's, he's he's gonna be moving out. Is Four Grow still over there? Uh, Four Elements is still over there. They're selling the business. Uh, they'll be selling. I think they're planning on selling sometime around April or March. Uh, I would love to see you own different then, elements of the business. I would love to, to like see you own the lawn care side of it. You know, there's not a bunch of money to be made unless you got volume. And then I'd love to see you own more of the materials. But, but can I can I pose an idea to you? Yeah. Dude, I fucking hate managing people. And you keep adding power to your team. I you keep adding people to your team, and and I love it, I love it. But I have a manager, right? I have Abraham who manages everybody. I literally, and it's beautiful since Aaron's been hired on. We've really, really fit into who's Aaron, house. my little brother. He's my sales guy. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, All right, yeah. Um, yeah, he was there at the whiskey tasting, right? No, nope. Who was that? That was Andy. Andy, Andy. Oh, shit. right? So he's, I've I've only seen Andy a couple times. Yeah, so you've I've, never met. I've Aaron. never really. You've never met Aaron. No, he's yeah. uh he's the black sheep of the family, and I don't mean the black sheep. I mean like the dude is a baby. And he's born like eleven years yeah, after everybody baby. else. Yeah. We all moved out, and he was a single child. So like he he got to be raised by different parents than we did. From yeah. age graduate high school two years ago. <laughs> yeah, two or three years ago. So he's like baby, whereas the rest of us have been out and adulting for a while. Mm. Um. But nonetheless, uh, so our logo is four trees, and that originally started as oh, in that's right, the four that. brothers, yep. and Aaron left, and I, admittedly, I told him to leave. I encouraged him to leave, and uh, hoping in the back of my head that he'd come back one day, and he just came back, and I man, I fucking love it. I love it. I, I, I just, I love it. Now, what did he do beforehand? I forgot. He worked at uh, some Cadillac. Oh. He was a, he was a, dude, so he was, he was the lot manager at Cadillac, so Every car on that Cadillac lot was under his watch. Whether it left, came back, got detailed, anything was under his watch. I'm like, so you manage a multi-million dollar lot at like 20 years old? He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, that's awesome. Like, good for you. 
he, he got tired of that industry and everything, so that's why he came back to us. Yeah. And yeah. admittedly, admittedly, when you work for family, man, you get a lot of you get a lot of benefits that you don't see, you know. And he saw that, and he's like, man, I'm tired of all this bullshit that I got to deal with here, and I'm just an employee, and so on and so forth, and working with us he sees a little bit more of that give and take already and you know it's just it's just reality you know with with family you know i have that saying you're gonna have to eat shit use a big spoon well it's a family business you're gonna have to eat shit a lot more often but you know at the same time you get a lot of leeway like my sister will be gone basically the whole month of march because she's gonna help my other sister move like what's she doing to fucking three minutes down the road but for, she's moved. She's moved from her rent house in Dallas. She's, they're finally buying a house in yeah. Dallas. Okay. Um. So Laura's gonna go, go down there and help her move and all this. I just but like move, move. Sometimes. Yeah, so yeah. Like, no. So that that's you know just one of those things that you get to get. And Aaron right now, uh, being that he's young, kind of is getting a little bit more freedom and getting to see a little bit. And and he's commission based, which I think is phenomenal, and he loves it. It's a good chase, you know. And I think as a as a young man, it's good to have a good chase, because then if not, you'll end up you know, finding something to chase that isn't necessarily productive. Do you so. think it factors in that his other three brothers all worked together? He felt like he was missing out on that sometimes? No, if I'm being honest, I thought he was trying to stay away from us. That's what I thought. Yeah, I, th- I thought, I, he, I think he was genuinely trying to stay away from working with us. Uh, but I think it came down to a point where he was like, I either gotta, I gotta deal with my brothers being big brothers. Probably grew up a little bit too. You know, or I gotta deal with, and, and admittedly, okay, so we had a, uh, we had a, a a family get together for my dad's passing, uh, my dad's death day uh, at my mom's house. And what we did was we planted a tree in honor of my dad. And when we planted the tree, we said, hey, is there anything anybody wants to say about my dad or so on and so forth? And in that moment, there's literally, I don't know, we've got a big family. There's a lot of us standing around, right? Uh, and we're all saying something about our dad or so on and so forth. And Aaron comes to you. And I know it's hard, dude, but he, he frankly got the balls and said, when this happened, I hated all of you guys. And my brother had to watch my dad die. Not only watch him, he had to help him die. Like literally help him through all of that. And up until that point, I think there was some animosity built up. And I think at the same time, there was some conversation that hadn't been had. And in that moment, it was in March when that happened, I felt that there was a big release in the family where Aaron finally said his piece. And afterwards, we all told him we loved him. We respected it. We understood because he did, dude. He went from being the baby of the house to literally helping his dad die. Like, and and then the rest of us disappeared and it wasn't on purpose. Like we got our own families got to deal with and so on and so forth. But I think having to go through the transition was really kind of eye opening. And like you said, he grew up a little bit. We grew up a little bit. And I, I tell people all the time, man. The, the best thing that ever happened to me and it's terrible was was my dad passed and it's because it forced me to grow up it forced me to do certain things that i did wasn't ready to do because i would you know i'd rely on dad to take care of that shit um and as much as i miss my dad as much as all this uh it really it really just kind of like emphasized the fact that hey it's time to grow up it's time to be the man your dad taught you to be uh and i think all of us felt that way and i think that's why Aaron was like hey you know even though i even though I'm not a hundred percent cool with you guys and everything, I'm gonna suck it up and I know we can build something awesome together. It's been awesome. Month. So remember when your dad called that car a blueberry that poke it. <laughs> I miss that blueberry. Yeah, me oh, too. Focus. Oh car. man. I'm excited to know Abel like you do. Oh man. It's cool. My friends, they either died or left the state. But believe it or not, we just had that conversation. Uh, Since we, then, we just had that conversation. He's been he's been my dude. That what? Two and a half years, dude. We we get we get. I think all of us, right? We grow up, we get busy, we start building our lives, and like I said, with, with Tim and I, did believe it or not, like we haven't really hung out in years. Yeah, we like see a, each other outside of just doing things, right? Like we we've gone. This is as close to hanging out as you've been in a while, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we went for a walk a little while ago. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that sounds yeah. some old shit. <laughs> what are you, 50? He came over to my house bro. not too long ago. <laughs> You're going to rock in the board, bro. Too. <laughs> check, check it out. You know what's crazy is the other day I was thinking, I was like, you know what? I want to talk with Brayden. I was like, I'm going to ask this motherfucker to go for a walk. And I literally thought to myself, I was like, Brayden's going to laugh at me if I ask him to go for a walk. I would like, He's like, You're going to go for a it. walk? Yeah. Oh, and, and we did go for It was a good walk. Did you just find a bench? You just sit down and you just talk about That's life. Literally what we did. We sit down on a bench at a park. Talk about That's life. Cool. 
but but nonetheless it's like, I like when i talked to you like literally last time i asked you what you wanted for christmas and you're like what do you want i was like i want no screens no technology i just want to hang out with family like that's literally all we did i was like hey let's just go for a walk and you put away the cons you put away life and you're just oh, I came just over a me. month ago and did my deer plot yeah so like we do hang out but like actually hanging out as friends as you get it to be an adult is difficult that's right? probably the closest to old school able you got he got on that skid steer after a few with these in there i got to drive a skid steer for the first time in my life this year and back was, there that was he dangerous. was doing donuts and tearing down trees bro i was, I was like i kind of like that tree i got home and then i told kyle the next day i literally took i was like oh my god she's like what i was like i should not have drove home last night i was like yes <laughs> and, and, and his phone died oh yeah that oh, was oh and she was no i oh, texted I had, her off I, I, I said i said you gotta text kyle and let her know i'm on my way home because but i was like how am i supposed to know when he gets but and I texted you. Did. I did my. I charged my phone yeah. as soon as it came on. I said, "Hey, I'm home." By the way, yeah. but nonetheless, right? But but that's my thing. Is like my fun isn't you know going out and doing networking or partying out clubbing. Like, bro, give me a good bonfire in the good middle of nowhere, some loud music, and let's go. Yeah, that's, we had no phones. My my money is definitely networking and stuff. Like, give me an after hours, give me luncheons and stuff like that. So that's actually some of the things that we're working on our 2025 goals on. Because we're gonna put on uh six to six to ten events next year. Nice. And, um, like the ones we did this year, were totally like winged it and a la carte and just like a, like a proof of concept, which is really cool because it's actually provided revenue for a nonprofit called soldier's wish. Right. And, uh, it's the whiskey tastings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and actually that caught wind from people outside of state that have oh, called me and uh, we've talked to me, that have talked to me and said, I'm tempted to fly in for this. I'm like, okay, sure, yeah. <laughs> Come on. I was <laughs> like, the next one's on October 23rd. Come on. It was a good event. I enjoyed it. Uh, which was different. Like with yours, like, I was talking about how like there was lots of this kind of chill time in between, which was really nice. Uh, and I've tried to structure the event to where there is some chill time. But when that didn't happen, it just kind of feels chaotic or whatever. Anyway, so it's still a good time. It's still ready money yeah, for no, a good cause and it stuff. Great. Um, okay. I, of course, since it's got my name on it, I'm critical. Right, right. Okay. And, so, and that's why, honestly, I try to be critical. And, dude, I got so much shit because I would get up and I'd, I'd tell you the two things I fucking told you. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kyla and my brother, like, oh, why you got to be so picky? I'm like, because nobody else is giving him criticism. And I know he wants yeah. it. I'm like, so I'm going to get up. Yeah, and, I want, don't and they're like, why yeah. do you say that? I was like, because that's how I am. Like, tell me. I don't want to just put on a mediocre show. Like, how do I get and better? I don't want someone to just be like, we were talking about this at the beginning of the podcast. Like, yeah. tell me if you don't like my haircut. Right. You know, like, right. If, I, if I give you a bad haircut, I want you to tell me. Like, okay. if I have a bad event, if I provided a bad service, you, I want you to know that I want to know. Right. Like, you got to like, tell me, man. Because otherwise, how am I supposed to change anything or do anything better? Right. You know? exactly. Because to, to your knowledge, it's good. And what I right. hate, and what I right. even when I ask and I go, hey, how was your haircut? And you go, oh, it was amazing. It was fantastic. I loved it. Look at my hair. Okay, cool. And then I hear from Abel that, like, you said that your hair was shit and you hated my haircut. But yeah, right. Why didn't you tell me? Like, that back ass, backward shit. Like, people got to quit doing that, yeah. dude. That drives me up. Well, oh, one, like, one that, that'll set happened, a relationship so fast. Oh, in a heartbeat. One, one thing that happened was, like, I, I got pissed at by Kyla and not really pissed at, just slightly, like, oh, it's not that big of a deal by mm -hmm. Kyla and Andy uh, because he, uh, Blue was trying to talk to us. Like, he was trying to do his thing and they couldn't hear. And I went and told you, right? I'm like, hey, they're just being a little loud. And, like, you didn't have to do that. I'm like, no, but I did. I was like, because the reality is Brandon already told me that this was a problem last time. And I'm not saying it for us because we can hear him. Blue's talking directly to us. The speaker's right behind us. But I'm doing it for Blue because he can't seem to keep a thought process because they're so loud. Well, Blue, Blue's a little more soft-spoken and so is John. Um, they're not they're not out and loud, whatever. And I'm not either. I, me talking on a microphone, that's totally abnormal for me. I was weirded out by that anyway, so whatever. Bro, you can uh, I can also say, shut up. Well, I mean, I, just, know you. I got a microphone. And I was like, listen, if you're going to communicate, please use your library voices. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Basically just like, shut the it. fuck up. Y'all yeah, are being rude. <laughs> yeah. Like he's trying to present and show you and tell you and educate you about this, which is the whole point of this. Right. This isn't a, you know, shoot some shots and like hang out with your buddies. happy hour. This isn't a happy hour. You know, like shut up and you got to pay attention and listen. You know, if you're going to talk with somebody, just be like, hey. Right. Gonna, blah, blah, blah. And like I said, for us, we, we really didn't care. Yeah. It was more blue seemed to like, he was struggling a little bit to keep his thought process and everything. Cause he, he, you could just tell it was a little loud. And that's why I told you, but again, it's not just about the experience for us. It's also experience for him. You want him to come back, right? If he feels like you just have him over for a crazy fucking show, but like, dude, that's too much chaos. His personality much. doesn't crowd control right. either. So it's like, yeah. so again, so with that, it's like just being able to tell you and 
having people like that in that circle that will tell you straight up, like, hey, either this is good or this is bad or whatever, you know, it does help. And But I thought your yeah. event was pretty good. And I mean, all the events that I've gone to that hosted or had something to do with were, I mean, I'd say. You got five whiskey shots. Fairly some, mediocre. Some pizza. <laughs> you know? I just, I want to know right away. Like, get the hair. Let me right away. I don't want to find out. I'm so emotional, like, intact in this every way in life. Like, mm-hmm. I'm an emotional human being. This is who I am. You're connected. And I'm so personable that if I find out from somebody else that you told me the haircut was great and then they're like, yeah. it's got to hurt my feelings a little bit. Honestly, it does. And I try not to let it get to me in business, too, but it will. But, but it'll affect me when I see you next, too. Like, if you come back after that, I'm be like, I have to subtly figure out what to do differently because you're obviously not going to tell me. You know, you know that's, I, I, that's I, happened with somebody. I'm not going to tell the name of it. But they were like, exactly like last time. I was like, it's not what I heard from three other. We got to wrap up in a few minutes. Right. I'm ready. Oh, you running? Oh, I mean, I got, I was just going to say something on the same line. Like, I just went through that where I literally had to say sorry to a customer who spent $20,000 with me and I, I wasted her money. I was so upset with myself. And she wasn't even mad. She's not even mad. She still don't work with us. But I, when I showed up to her job and they're to her house and somebody else is redoing work that I should have been redoing because I didn't leave the property the way I should have left it because the customer wasn't happy and I genuinely wasn't happy and I made excuses or whatever, right? Whatever the, the haircut you may not have been feeling that day or whatever, right? Whatever the situation was for this particular job, but I felt horrible because more than anything, I like to think of myself as a good steward of people's money. And at that time, I felt like I had wasted her money. I felt like I had just completely threw away her money. And that made me feel like absolute shit. And believe it or not, that whole weekend, and talk emotionally, I went home and I literally told myself, this is why you're broke. You can't take care of other people's money. So that's why you can't afford your own money, which I mean, I'm not broke. I'm fucking fine. But I'm not like, to their level, why well, spend twenty thousand dollars on a landscape? But nonetheless, it was kind of one of those things where it's like, man, and the emotional was like, this is my reputation. This is everything I do. Like everything I do hangs on this one thing. And what happened there was a lack of commu- lack of managing a relationship, lack of communication. And I, I actually, I think I'm mending that relationship now, and everything's going to be kosher on the back end. But nonetheless, it's one of those things where I wish they would have told me, and and they didn't tell me. They thought I was preoccupied or whatever, and and. and res- so respectfully i do ex- i do appreciate that but i'd rather you just tell me yeah. just just tell me like don't hire somebody else just tell me that hey you're pissing me off and i haven't got to talk to you and so on and so forth and i feel like i got screwed and blah, blah, blah. whatever the situation is and and i'd rather make it right than you know give me that big spoon i'm about to eat some shit but uh brett told me once he goes bartner i won't name it but he goes uh expectations create frustrations and that really stuck with me for about two years, just about until this year. And it was actually on our podcast. It was one of our earlier episodes in the other room. And I, and up until this year, I'm like, you know, uncommunicated expectations will create frustrations. Yeah. But if I don't communicate what I expect of you to cut my hair, why, why should I have any justification to be frustrated with you? And you can't be frustrated with me if I didn't, you're going to be frustrated with me if I didn't communicate that. So it's important to like have it both ways and make sure that like, Hey, I communicate. I want this haircut. Okay. Well, communicate with me that you heard what I said I wanted and you said, okay, you like the style of haircut. Cool. Got it. You know what I mean? Hey, you want to cut that way? Cool. Got it. You know, uh, I think it's important to set those expectations. Um, next time we, uh, next bruising business, we need to talk about, uh, money is an exchange of energy. Mm. And as uh, an energy is not meant to be stored forever, it eventually dies. And energy is designed to be exchanged between sources. I like that. And mm. you know, you, in the oh, boom, in the boomer, good. in the boomer mindset, you know, there's save, 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 stingy, stingy, my money, my money, my, money, you know, whatever it is, right? Uh, that's just an example of perception, whatever. We could dive into that, talk about that later. And. And one of the things that I've kind of thought about this year, which has really taked, uh, uh, caused me to, to, to pursue and take a leap over the next six months, is I'm like, it's just ones and zeros. Yeah. And we've talked about that too. And if I can take Trying. energy Trying. and provide and create it'll come opportunities, back. It'll, it'll, it has to come back around. It's it has come back. to. There's, 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 no, there's no way it, it can't. Or shouldn't. It's and, not and designed might. to not come back. Yeah, right, right. And so... I would agree with that. I, I, I'm, so we got to dive into that. Yeah. I and I, I've actually got a video 
that I need to send to you so you can watch it. Uh, it's a little bit more personal development that uh, that she mentions about this too. Mm-hmm. And it's actually some conversations that me and my therapist have had last several sessions about energy, time, the exchange of stuff and just leadership and motivations and development and all that's other short stuff too. But um, what yeah, about I agree. And like the 10x rule by Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone's a little like over the top sometimes, but he's got some good points. It's a like, good book. You know, like that 10x rule. Like if you're, for example, for those who haven't done it, we got to move on. The uh, yeah, if you're eight. if you're shooting for a million, 10 million, make it 10 million. Why? Because if you aim for a million and you shoot, you know, you're short, you're at 900, that sucks. If you aim for 10 and you hit three, well, that's better than a million. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Take the idea that you have and like multiply it times 10. Like it has to be ridiculous. And that's fine if you didn't hit it. If you hit it, well, guess what? That's way better than hitting something one X. So, so I'm really trying to like, that's kind of another thing that's kind of gone into the whole like other six locations that we have in four mm-hmm. different states is I'm like, and, and uh, one, two, three, four, five, five of those are brick and mortars. It's the sixth one, of course, the home one is, the first one is here. The Greensboro one is just a mailbox, just to get, just to get on the maps for now. But like the other ones, like I don't know, a lot of exciting things we got to talk about next episode for sure. So uh, appreciate you. Thank you for joining. No, yeah, that's right. great here, Tim. Man, this is oh, good. Yeah. We could do this all day, baby. Yeah, legitimately. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. It, like I said, the studio space is awesome. Honestly, a good conversation always goes. It just it just Fun. goes naturally. But yeah, it was it was a great time. Yeah, honestly, it was a good conversation. I can't wait to talk about all that because honestly, that's a uh, that's one I've been really trying to embrace lately. And it's it's, it's scary as shit to try to embrace some of that just just to realize it's ones and zeros and and it's an exchange of energy yep. and to to to, to 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 trust it to trust it that's the biggest <laughs> thing you got to trust it you got to trust it it's a risk it. but again the bigger the risk the bigger the reward yep. Yep. fast is hour but, and 13 it happens yeah it was uh, you conversate you dude you got to come back even when i do my hair do you want to come back absolutely we got to wrap up yeah. cuz i got to pee all right well thank you for joining the Bruce and business podcast go to bruisingbiz.com if you'd like to become a guest or if you know somebody who would like to be a guest like what Abel said definitely uh and support Gregor and coffee roasters please we don't make we don't make any money on this this is to support Gregor and coffee roasters he's a local coffee roaster out of Owasso, Oklahoma widow dad amazing guy really cool and he's like hey I'll private label our my bag for you Sounds like okay, great. We'll cross promote and we'll just work yeah. together. It's great, and it's amazing. It's good coffee. Amazing man. coffee. It's good. Coffee. <laughs> you it's good. And now I have plenty to sniff. It's good coffee. <laughs> uh, and then, and then we got some really cool merch. So if you'd like to support us, you can do that that way. And uh, appreciate your time. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cool. Thanks, man. See you. <laughs>